قال المؤلف رحمه الله said the author may Allah have mercy upon him القاعدة الثانية the second rule كل قول أو فعل أو ارتكاد every saying or action or doing action or doing or conviction or belief فيه استغفاف بالله having disrespect for God أو رسله أو كتبه أو ملائكته أو أحكامه or disrespect for his prophets or his books or his angels or his rules أو وعده أو وعيده or his promise or his threat أو شعائره أو معالم دينه or the symbols of his religion, أو آياته, or the verses of his Quran, فهو كفر. It would then be blasphemy. So that's a rule there. Where's disrespect? This istighfaf. The source of it is going to be your heart. That's where it originates from. When he says any saying or action or conviction that has disrespect. Disrespect in these cases that we mentioned here. وَقَدْ قَسَمَ الْعُلَمَاءُ الْلَفْضَ الْمُكَفِّرَ إِلَى ظَاهِرٍ وَصَرِيحٍ And the scholars have divided the expression that renders a person a disbeliever. الْلَفْضَ الْمُكَفِّرِ The expression that renders one a disbeliever. They have divided these expressions into two divisions. إِلَىٰ ظَاهِرٍ وَصَرِيحٍ To apparent or seeming blasphemy and explicit, blatant, clear, unequivocal blasphemy. Those are the two cases. One, clear, uh, apparent, ظاهر, apparent. Seeming outward, yeah, it's what it looks like. It looks like it's blasphemy. And sorry, explicit, frank, blatant blasphemy. What appears to be blasphemy? Vahir, a vahir. What appears to be blasphemy is that which, in accordance with how the language was put forth, whatever language the speaker is speaking, that which has two or more ways it can be taken, according to how the language was put. However, it is closer, Yani, it is more apparently it more seemingly means the blasphemous meaning. It's still not explicit in that regard, though. And as for the explicit blasphemy, It does not have but one blasphemous way. And it only means one blasphemous meaning according to the way the language was put. فَقَالُوا uh, قَالُوا They said فَمَنْ تَكَلَّمَ بِلَفْضٍ ظَاهِرٍ لَهُ مَعْنَ يَانِ They said, therefore, anyone who speaks with a seeming expression of blasphemy, an expression having two or more meanings, أَحَدُهُمَا مُتَبَادِرٌ وَهُوَ الْكُفُرُ وَالْآخَرُ غَيْرُ مُتَبَادِرٌ One of those two meanings is what rushes to the mind, to the understanding of the hearer. And that one is the blasphemous meaning. And the other meaning is, does not rush to the mind. لا يحكم بكفري. Here, important rule. He is not judged as a disbeliever. 
hatta yatabayyana muradu until his intent becomes clear so now I'll give you inshallah ta'ala a useful tip so many cases a person's question is how do i judge this do i judge it as blasphemy or not i don't know what to do it's very 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 easy answer is it a clear blasphemy is what was said a clear blasphemy so then the person might say i have no idea maybe it is a clear blasphemy what do i do uh so uh, then let me ask you another question real quick is it apparently blasphemy that can have more than one meaning so the person might say i don't know so then there's no reason to be confused here and for any reason whatsoever why? Because you don't know that that's an explicit blasphemy. Just by virtue of the fact that that does not register for you as an explicit, undeniable blasphemy, then you're not going to judge that person as a blasphemer. There's no reason to be confused here. Not knowing the meaning of what a person said is not a reason for you to panic. As long as... You, the hearer, on a personal level, as long as you, the hearer, cannot determine that statement to be an unequivocal, explicit, blatant, clear, straightforward blasphemy, then you're not going to judge that person as a Catholic because you can't. You don't have any room to do so. So then a person might say, but what if he really committed blasphemy? Okay, maybe he did, but you don't know. So what are you going to do? You're not going to judge that person as a kafir. So really, it's a very, very, very easy case here. Maybe most of the questions about if somebody committed blasphemy is here. Someone heard something, doesn't know what it means, or doesn't know which way to take it. And now, Yanni, they don't stop there. Add to that, now they have emotional distress because they're saying, I don't know what to do. Uh, easy. You don't judge that person as a kafir until you're sure that that's a clear, straightforward blasphemy. Or if it's not a clear, straightforward blasphemy, that it, at least that he meant blasphemy by it, then you're going to deem that person as a kafir. And then you might say, so what should I do? Uh, well, I just told you. Don't deem that person as a kafir. So what should the other person do? Well, if you want, then tell them you need to ask about your situation. So a lot of times when someone asks me, uh, is this kufr or what's the judgment of this? My answer is, my answer is not this is kufr or this is not kufr. My answer is this is not clear kufr. The statement itself is not clear kufr. So that means I'm not going to deem that person as a kafir because for me it's not a clear kufr. Um, and you, the one who's bringing the question, then also shouldn't deem it as blasphemy because for you it's not a clear kufr either. So what does the Sheikh say here? لا يحكم بكفره حتى يتبين مراده. The person is not deemed as a disbeliever until his intent becomes clear. So again, one more time here, a person might say, but what if it really was kufr though? So that means you are not understanding. If that's still your question, you're not understanding the rules here. So understand what you're being told. If it's not for you, a clear blasphemy for you as the hearer, then don't deem it as blasphemy until it becomes clear for you. That's it. Shaykh says, Rahimahullah, wa amma man takallama bi lafzin sarihin fil kufr. But concerning someone who speaks an explicit expression of blasphemy, fayu kafar, he will be deemed as a blasphemer. He's deemed as a blasphemer. That means you don't have to investigate here when he says explicit kufr. You can say, uh, that's explicit kufr. Yani, that's kufr. <laughs> and then you go from there. 
And this person who said explicit, blatant, frank, clear, obvious, unequivocal, blasphemy, we don't see what did he mean by it. We don't seek or we don't ask. He's not asked about his intent. Like if someone said, I hate God. So you don't say, what do you mean by that? Rather, you say, that's kufr. That's explicit kufr, very clear. And also, if this person who said an explicit statement of blasphemy attempts to reinterpret his statements, if he attempts to reinterpret his statements, the reinterpretation of his explicit statements is unacceptable. Like a person says... Damn, the messenger of God. And then you told him, that's blasphemy. And he says, no, I meant the scorpion. Or he says, no, I meant the lightning. So he's reinterpreting messenger of God as scorpion or lightning. This is not acceptable. When I say it's not acceptable, that means it's worthless. It has no weight. He'll still be deemed as a kafir. Unless he happens to not know that this expression is explicit in blasphemy. Rather, he thinks that it has another meaning that's not kufr. So it means he's ignorant about the meaning of the statement he's saying. Then, in this case, this expression does not have the judgment of an explicit statement concerning this person. This statement does not have an explicit, does not have the judgment of explicit blasphemy concerning this individual it is explicit blasphemy but for his own personal case since he thinks it has another meaning then for him it's not an explicit blasphemy an example of this is what some people say is like when some people say nothing exists but God. Or they say God is everything. That's explicit blasphemy. These expressions are explicit blasphemy. According to their meaning in the language. Because they mean that the world is Allah. Because they mean that the world is Allah. Someone says nothing exists but God. Then it means that the world is God. That's explicit blasphemy. لكن من الناس من لا يفهمون منها هذا المعنى. But some people don't understand this meaning. بل يظنون أن معناها أن الله هو مدبر كل شيء. Rather, they think that this means that Allah is manager of everything. That's what they think it means. Likewise, if they were to say, Allah is everywhere, they might think that means Allah knows everything and Allah has power over everything. Those ones are not deemed as disbelievers. If they said this word, we're not going to deem them as disbelievers because of what they believe it to mean. What they think that it means and their ignorance. وَإِنَّمَا يُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهَا Merely they are forbidden from that. 
ويبين لهم فساد معناها بخلاف الذين وضعوا هذه الكلمات لأول مرة and the corruption of what this word means should be clarified for whoever said it and that this person thinks the statement means something that really his understanding is different from how it was first put forth by those who said it. Those who originally say that statement, they say it to mean something, and then this person came along not understanding really what the statement means, thinking it means something else. وَكَانُوا يَفْهَمُونَ هَذَا الْمَعْنَى الَّذِي هُوَ تَوْحِيدُ اللَّهِ وَالْعَالَمِ those who originally say this statement, what they understand from it and what they mean by it, yani, is that God and the world are one. They are pantheists. This is, these are the words of the pantheists. You know a pantheist? Mm -hmm. Pantheist. Yes, pantheists believe that Allah and the world are one and the same. So you have atheists, they believe there's no God. You have polytheists, those believe in many gods. You have monotheists, the only religion that's really monotheistic is Islam though. And there are individuals who are monotheists in the real sense. Who aren't, they're not Muslims, but they are monotheists. That's possible. Uh, and you have pantheists. Pantheists say God is, and the world is everything. Is one God and everything are one, they say. A Jalullahi wal alami shay'an wahida, meaning they make God and the world to be the same thing. So in whom you kafarun, those are indeed deemed as disbelievers. Wahaula ikanu min mala hadatil mutasawifa, those are from the irreligious Sufi perpetrators the irreligious sufi perpetrators they're basically uh swindlers they're grifters some people who found themselves in the midst of muslims and they said oh muslims they like uh, these type they like these type of fellows huh i can do that i could put a turban wear a robe and act like i'm uh, humble and then they'll give me money and give me attention and they'll listen to what i have to say Irreligious Sufi perpetrators, frauds, and grifters. Al Muntasibina il al Islam, who are attributed to Islam, affiliated with Islam. Wasalat ilayhim hadihi al kalimatu min baadi falasifat il yunan. This word, or these words, these expressions of pantheism, reached them by way of. Greek philosophers. Then these expressions came forth from these grifters, these swindlers. These grifters who took what they took their words from the philosophers. Then they started using those words. So it means then the layman started to hear these words that nothing exists but Allah, or Allah has everything. They would hear these words from those swindlers min ghayri an ya'rifu ma'naha without knowing their true meanings. ثُمَّ مُنْذُ نَحْوِ قَرْنٍ ظَهَرَ مِنْ أُنَاسٍ يَنْتَسِبُونَ لِلشَّاذِلِيَةِ الْيَشْرُطِيَ الْقَوْلُ بِهَذِهِ الْكَلِمَاتِ مَعَا عَتِقَادِ مَعْنَاهَا Then, there appeared about a century ago some people affiliated with a Sufi order called Ashadiliya al Yashrutliya, the Yashrutli Shavilis. Th these people they started to say these words of pantheism while believing them actually. While believing their meaning, that's the kufr meaning. And that is the original meaning of it. Those people sometimes say that Allah dwells in every person. 
وتارة يقولون باتحاد الله بالأشخاص and sometimes they say that Allah and the people are one and the same. So those are two different cases there. Those who say that God dwells within things. And those who say that God is everything. So those are close, but they're not exactly the same. So what's like that? That also is a common question. There's few of them. One of them is when someone says, holy such and such. And then someone says, that's kufr. Uh, it's kufr. The, the meaning is kufr. Like if someone says, holy cow, holy-ish, yani, the S word, or something like that. That's blasphemy, but do the people understand what that means when they say it? Uh, so if they don't, and that's... Yani, that could be argued that they don't, that they would say holy such and such without comprehension of the meaning of what they're saying. And then someone's going to say, especially though here, especially someone who's not a native English speaker is going to say, well, don't they know the meaning of holy? Don't they know the meaning of such and such? Yeah, if you break it apart and you put it that way, yeah. But same thing here. When they said in Arabic, La mawjuda illallah, don't they know the meaning of mawjud? Don't they know the meaning of such and such? They know that. Doesn't mean they understand that. And no. You said, does not understanding and not learning the judgment have the same weight? No, those are different. Those are two different things altogether. Because not under we talk about not understanding the meaning of a statement. That's one thing. It has it's in its own place. The other thing is not not having learned the judgment of the statement. That's completely different valley. So some people say some things like that. What are you going to do if someone says holy such and such? Well, you can say to him, uh, that's blasphemy to say something like that. But you're going to be probably aware that a lot of people don't really know what that means. Really, really what that means. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to stick here too long on this holy subject because some people are, are very sure that the people who say it, they understand what it means. But Allahu Alam, if that's the case, because number one, that's why there's so many questions about it. That's why when someone says, wait, they said holy such and such, and then someone says, that's kufr, and then the person who hears that, he's not satisfied in himself. It's, yeah, that's kufr. Yeah, yeah, it is kufr. Okay. But did they know what that means? Oh, don't, how they don't know what that means? They don't know what holy means? They don't know what cow means? It's a kufr. It's clear. And then the person who got the answer, really, he's not satisfied. So he goes and he asks somebody else. Because, I say, that's because you realize that eh, I'm not really convinced that the people understand what this means. Mm. When they say, holy cow, they're saying, wow, that's so amazing. That's what, that's what that means to them. They're not saying, holy, yeah, they, don't, they don't mean to, I mean. They don't mean to say, there's a cow that's holy. They don't mean to say that. They mean to express their surprise about something. And they will put in there any other word, not just cow, any word there. So, be clear, let's be clear, and then I'm going to move on. I'm not saying that doesn't mean something kufr in reality. What I'm saying is, here the sheikh is talking about statements that are explicit in kufr, but a person does not know what that means. I mean, I got a lot of pushback about this from some people. That's why I'm I'm still here. And and like I said too, always that's from people that English not their second language, their first language. Um, my personal experience, always from people that that's English is not their first language. Those are the ones push hard here. I remember those old Batman shows when Robin is saying "Holy this, holy that," as a child watching that, and I never, never understood. One time, until I became a grown man and I embraced Islam and I learned the rules of blasphemy and then someone came with the question about someone saying holy and I said, oh, snap, that's a question. 
So then that's how you're going to handle that. Someone says explicit blasphemy. Explicit blasphemy. It means really kufr. But it's a case of a person who doesn't really know what it means. What the statement means. He thinks it means something that it doesn't really mean. Or he's oblivious to what it really means. Then we're not going to deem him as a kafir and we're going to forbid him from saying that. So I'm going to say don't say that. So I'm not advocating for that word, holy, anything like that. Just, I'm telling you, that don't rush to deem a person as a kafir there. That's really the crux of what I'm saying. وَكَذَلِكَ The Shaykh says, And likewise, إِنْ ظَنَّ شَخْصٌ لِجَهْلِهِ بِالْمَعْنَ اللُّغَوِي أَنَّ الْكَلِمَةَ الصَّرِيحَةَ فِي الْكُفْرِ تَحْمِلُ فِي اللُّغَةِ وَجْهَيْنِ Likewise, if the person, due to his ignorance of the linguistic meaning, thought that the explicit word of blasphemy bears in the language two meanings. A blasphemous meaning and another meaning that's not kufr. And then he said it. And he intended the non-blasphemous meaning that he thinks that this word bears, and it does not. So, the case we were talking about now still fits here. He does not blaspheme. As opposed to whoever believes that uh, as opposed to whoever knows that the word is explicit. He knows that. It's explicit. According to the way it was put forth in the language. But all that he did was he invented a meaning for it. He birthed a meaning for it. Another meaning different from how it really originally means in his claim. Bizamihi. Fakasadahu min ghayri an ya'atakida al ma'an al asli. Al ma'an al asli yalaha. So then he says that word without believing in the original meaning. We're saying here, he knows what the word means. He is in his own world, giving this word another meaning, and then saying this word while knowing what it means, but with the intention of another meaning, and he pronounced it intentionally, while he has comprehension of the original meaning, that would be like what some fools say. You're God's sister or daughter. You're God's daughter. Ucht. It's Ucht. Sister. Uh, you're God's sister. Or like some of them saying, or some of them say to others, Oh, son of God. Oh, child of God. Those are blaspheming. Although they're not intending the original meaning, they're still committing blasphemy. So that one who says, holy such and such, and he, uh, he's conscious of the meaning when he says it. At the moment he's saying it, he's aware of its meaning, and he says it anyway, even with another meaning, then he would blaspheme. Some of them, they say, they say in slang language, not formal Arabic language. Ya ibn Allah, biduniha min lafdil jalala. So they're saying, oh, son of God. They're mispronouncing the name of Allah. Wahum yafhamuna min hadha lafdillah. And when they say Allah, they understand from it, Allah. Because to them, if you say Allah or 
Allah, it's the same. So mispronouncing the word then, what Shaykh benefiting us here, mispronouncing the word is not going to help either. When he's intending by that word he's pronouncing something. فَمَنْ تَلَفَّضَ بِالصَّرِيحِ مِنْ أَلْفَاظِ الرِّدَّةِ نَظَرْنَا فِي حَالِهِ So anyone who pronounced something explicit, explicit expressions of apostasy, then we look into his situation. هَلْ يَفْهَمُ الْمَعْنَى أَوْ يَجْهَلُهُ وَيَظُنُّ أَنَّ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةَ مَعْنَاهَا شَيْءٌ آخَرٌ does he understand the meaning? Or is he ignorant of the true meaning and he thinks that this word means something else? If he's ignorant of the true meaning of the statement, then we will not deem him as a disbeliever in this case. Rather, we will teach him the real meaning of what he's saying and then we will forbid him. Say this, when you say that, it means such and such. So don't say it. When you say holy cow, that means you're deeming that cow religiously noble. So don't say that. Even if he said something explicit and he forgot that it means kufr. الذي كان يعرفه قبل the the blasphemous meaning that he did used to know he forgot it. ولم يكن يفهم ولم يكن يفهم منه عند النطق إلا معنى ليس فيه كفر. And then he was not understanding from it when he pronounces it anything but a non-blasphemous meaning. He was not understanding from it anything but a non-blasphemous meaning because he forgot what it really means. Then this one does not blaspheme. So for this uh, word of expressing astonishment when people say holy such and such, I used to, many years ago, I used to say to a person, not kufr. And then Hajar Yad pulled me to the side and then he benefited me with uh, some very fine detail there. So, the case is like what we're reading right now. وَيُعْلَمُ مِنْ هُنَا أَنَّهُ لَا يَنْبَغِي التَّثَرُّعُ فِي إِطْلَاقِ التَّكْفِيرِ عَلَى شَخْصٍ عَلَى شَخْصٍ نَطَقَ بِكَلَامٍ غَيْرِ صَرِيحٍ فِي الْكُفْرِ So it is known from this, that one should not rush to say that a person is a disbeliever for pronouncing something that's not explicit in blasphemy that goes back to what we were saying in the beginning if it's not clear kufr don't here you don't have to worry you don't even have to be uh, talk about for your own self as far as you're not deeming him as a kafir you don't know what it means you're not sure it's explicit kufr then you're not going to deem him as a kafir Shaykh says here, one should not rush to say the expression that this is, you committed kufr to a person who said something that's not explicit in kufr. Rather, it, it appears to be blasphemy. It appears to be, but it's not explicit. He should not rush before knowing what the person meant by that statement. This is the statement I was looking for. Because I always tell people, Shaykh says, even for explicit blasphemy, you don't have to rush. You don't have to rush, even if it is explicit. Here's where he said it. Maybe it's in another spot too. He says, Also, one shouldn't rush to deem a person as a kafir when he pronounced explicit blasphemy. Without the hearer knowing the meaning of the expression. There it is. 
You don't know what it means. It's explicit, but you don't know as the hearer what it means. Then, Carlos, I mean, relax for yourself as far as you don't have to be afraid that you committed kufr because you're not deeming him as a kafir. That's question really that shows the lack of understanding these rules of kufr. This is a pivotal rule here. And that's a very frequent question. Like for me, maybe someone would say something that I don't know what it means. You might say, oh, you, you, you know English, uh, you, you don't have that problem. It's not the case. But the case is, though, that that rule, alhamdulillah, is not unclear for me. A person's statement could be unclear for me, but the rule is clear for me, so I'm not going to deem him as a kafir. I'm not even going to be afraid for myself. Without knowing the meaning of the expression, don't rush to deem the person as a kafir, even if it is explicit, when you don't know the meaning of the expression. And when you don't know that that's explicit blasphemy. And throughout all of this, the Shaykh didn't say, rather, it's obligatory on you to ask. He didn't say that also. He didn't say, when you don't know what's the meaning of that statement, it's obligatory on you to ask. He didn't say that. It's not obligatory on you to know the meaning of everything that anyone would ever say. Just because someone says something to you and you don't know what it means doesn't mean you're obligated now to go find out what it means. So someone might say something to you and you'll say, I don't even know what that means. Khalas. I'm, I'm changing the subject now. I, I'm not interested enough to go and research what it means. I'm not going to deem it as kufr. I don't know what it means. And also, my mind is busy somewhere else. I'm not going to stop here all of my life to go find out what it means. You don't have to. And ring everybody, ring every phone I know, send text to everybody until I find out what this word means. All about the ulama min al Hanafiyati wa ghayrihim. Some scholars said, amongst the Hanafis and others, إِذَا كَانَ لِي الْكَلِمَةِ سَبْعُونَ مَعْنًا هِيَ كُفُرْ If a word has 70 blasphemous meanings, وَمَعْنًا وَاحِدٌ لَيْثَ كُفْرًا And one meaning that's not blasphemy, لَا يُكَفَّرُ الْمُتَلَفِّظُ بِهَا The one who pronounced it is not deemed as a blasphemer, إِلَّا أَنْ يُعْلَمَ أَنَّهُ أَرَادَ مَعْنًا مِنَ الْمَعَانِ الَّتِي هِيَ كُفُرْ he won't be deemed as a disbeliever unless it's known that he meant the meaning of all of its meanings that's blasphemy. Or a meaning of all of its meanings that's blasphemy. Shaykh says here, Something close to this is attributed to Abu Hanifa or Malik. It's not valid from them though. It's not authenticated from them. But in meaning it's correct. Even if neither of those two Imams said it. And there is an expression attributed to Abu Hanifa or Malik, and it's not the same statement. It doesn't uh, here. I was now talking about here what's in this footnote. What's attributed to those two Imams, its words are different from that. And it's not a valid meaning, is this here in this footnote. What some people attribute to Malik or Abu Hanifa that they said, if a case has 99 sayings of deeming it, deeming a person as a kafir, like a vote, for example, 99 yays. Yay meaning yes, we deem him as kafir. And one nay. One saying that we don't deem him as a kafir. takfir. We will take the nay. That's where the judgment goes. The judgment goes to the nay. He's not deemed as a kafir. This is a lie on those two imams. That's what I was just talking about now from the Sheikh's words. But really, Sheikh was talking about something else. Here, so let me repeat. Some scholars... Hanafis and others, they said that if a word has 70 meanings, not vote that 70 who say it's kufr, 
70 meanings for the word. And all of those 70 are kufr. And it has one meaning that's not kufr. Then what's the rule? Do we deem the person who said it is a kafir? And the word has 70 meanings that are kufr. And one meaning that's not kufr. The person said this word, you can interpret it this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. All of those ways are kufr except one way. Do we deem him as a kafir? We don't deem him as a kafir. Not unless we know that he meant the kufr meaning. لا يكفر المتلفظ بها إلا أن يعلم أنه أراد معنى من المعاني التي هي كفر. Yes. والتعبير المقرر عند الفقهاء المتأخرين في إثبات حكم الردة هو قولهم. So here, Sheikh didn't say what is that other wording that's not authentic, although its meaning is right. And then the Sheikh says the settled wording. The uh, widespread accepted vernacular terminology of the scholars, in this case, the later ones, the later jurists, they said concerning confirming the judgment of apostasy, they said, in kana lil kalimati wujuh. وَجُوهٌ تَقْتَضِرُ الْكُفْرَ وَوَجْهٌ وَاحِدٌ لَا يَقْتَضِرُ الْكُفْرَ If a word has ways that dictate blasphemy, and one way that does not dictate blasphemy, لَا يُكَفِرُهُ الْمُفْتِي Then the one who's giving the verdict, who's giving the answer, does not deem this one a kafir. إِلَّا أَنْ يَقْصِدَ الْمَعْنَ الْكُفْرِي Unless he is intending the blasphemous meaning. وَمُرَادُهُمْ بِالْوُجُوهِ الْمَعَانِي And what they mean by saying, it can be taken many ways, is that it has many meanings. فَإِنَّ الْكَلِمَةَ الْوَاحِدَةَ قَدْ يَكُونُ لَهَا بِضَعَ عَشْرَةَ مَعْنَا For indeed, a single word could have ten something meanings. Like the word yad in Arabic. So if someone attributed yad to Allah, and he means an organ, meaning the limb, that body part that a human or someone else would have, a human or someone or, or something else would have, like a, an angel would have, or some animals have, like monkeys, for example. يُحْكَمُ عَلَيْهِ بِالْكُفْرِ Then he would be judged as a kafir. لِأَنَّهُ شَبَّهَ اللَّهَ بِخَلْقِهِ Because in that case, he's comparing God to his creations. وَمَنْ نَسَبَ الْيَدَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَرَادَ بِهَا الْقُدْرَةَ أَوْ النِّعْمَةَ أَوْ نَحْوَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمَعَانِ So whoever attributes yet to Allah, and he means a body part, he's a kafir. But if he attributes yad to Allah and he means power or endowment or the likes of that amongst the many meanings that yad has, لَيْسَ فِيهَا تَشْبِيهُ اللَّهِ بِخَلْقِهِ Amongst all the meanings that it has, and those are meanings that don't compare Allah to his creations, فَلَا يُكَفَّرْ He will not be deemed as a disbeliever. فَعَلَى هَذَا التَّفْصِيلِ يُحْكَمُ عَلَى مَنْ يُفَثِّرُ الْيَدَ الْمُضَافَةَ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ So according to these details is the judgment of whoever attributes the yad to Allah or whoever interprets rather whoever interprets the yad that's attributed to Allah in the Qur'an the interpreter of Yad. What's his judgment? Depends on how he interprets it. How it came in the Quran about Allah, Yadullah. So what's the judgment of the one who says Yadullah? Depends on his interpretation. If his interpretation is literal Yad, body part Yad, hand, that's blasphemy. وَعَلَى مَنْ يُفَسِّرُ الْإِسْتِوَاءَ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ الْوَارِدَ فِيهِ وَالْمَجِيءَ الْوَارِدَ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And same thing about the one who interprets istiwa and who interprets uh, maji. Maji apparently means 
approaching. So, the Maji of Allah. How is the person interpreting that? Wal Maji al Warida fi Kaulihi Ta'ala fi Surah Al Fajr. Waja Rabbuka wal Malak. That's the 22nd ayah of Surah Al Fajr. What's his judgment? His judgment depends on how he interprets it. فَإِنْ فَسَّرَ الْيَدَ بِالْجَارِحَةِ أَوْ الْإِسْتِوَاءَ بِالْجُلُوسِ أَوْ الْإِسْتِقْرَارِ أَوْ أَوْ عُلُوِّ الْمَكَانِ وَالْمَسَافَةِ So if he interprets the yad as a body part, or if he interprets the istiwa as sitting or dwelling or highness of place, وَالْمَسَافَةِ uh, and distance, أَيْ فَسَّرَ الْوَارِدَ بِالْمَعْنَ الْحِسِّيِ الَّذِي هُوَ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْمَخْلُوقِ Meaning, he interpreted what came in the religious texts according to a physical meaning, الَّذِي هُوَ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْمَخْلُوقِ A physical meaning that's an attribute of creations. أَوْ فَسَّرَ الْمَجِيءَ بِأَنَّهُ كَمَجِيءِ الْإِنسَانِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ بِالْإِنْتِقَالِ وَالْحَرَكَةِ مِنْ جِهَةٍ إِلَى جِهَةٍ Or, if he interprets the majeet as the... The same meaning as when a human approaches or an angel comes forth. Transferring by motion from one direction to another. He will blaspheme for that. So based on what has already been presented, we say. So had we heard a person saying, for example, As-salatu ala nabi makruha. Salah upon the Nabi is disliked. فَلَا يَنْبَغِي التَّسَرُّعُ فِي تَكْفِيرِهِ Then, you don't have to rush to deem him as a disbeliever. بَلْ يُسْأَلُ عَمْ مُرَادِهِ Rather, he would be asked about what he means. لِأَنَّ الْعَرَبَ يُطْلِقُونَ كَلِمَةَ النَّبِي عَلَى الْعَرْضِ الْمُرْتَفِيعَةِ الْمُحْدَوْدِبَةِ because the Arabs use the word Nabi not only for a prophet, but also for a mound. A mound. An elevated piece of land that's like a hump. You can call that in Arabic Nabi. فَإِن تَبَيَّنَ أَنَّ مُرَادَهُ أَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ الْمُحْدَوْدَبَةِ مَكْرُوهَ So if it became clear that when he said الصَّلَاةُ The Salah on the Nabi is disliked. If it became clear that he meant performing the worship of prayer while standing upon a mound is disliked. Because when a person prays like that, he won't have any reverence for God because his mind is distracted. He's trying to keep his balance. Then this is correct. وَإِن تَبَيَّنَ أَنَّ مُرَادَهُ بِقَوْلِهِ هَذَا But if it became clear that what he meant by this saying of his أَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَى النَّبِي مُحَمَّدٍ مَكْرُوحًا That the salah, meaning the special supplications upon the Nabi, the Prophet Muhammad is disliked فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ Then he would be a disbeliever. وَفِي الْقَامُوسِ وَغَيْرِهِ أَنَّ كَلِمَةَ النَّبِي لَهَا هَذَانِ الْمَعْنَيَانِ in the dictionary Al-Qamus and other than that, it is documented that the word Nabi has these two meanings. وَيَتَبَيَّنُ لَنَا أَيْضًا أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ لِلْمُفْتِي أَنْ يُفْتِيَ فِي هَذِهِ الْمَسَائِلِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَعْلَمَ لِسَانَ أَهْلِ الْبَلَدِ فِيمَا يَسْتَعْمِلُونَ مِنَ الْأَلْفَاظِ And so it has also become clear for us. That it's not permissible for the one to give who gives verdict. That it's not permissible for the one who gives verdict to give a verdict in these cases. Cases of pronounced words. Unless he knows the tongue of the people of the town and how they use the words. A anahu laysa lil mufti and yufti. And yufti afima yata'allaku bil alfal, meaning uh, the verdict giver, like a judge, has no right to give a verdict concerning expressions 
like we talk about here, blasphemy or divorce. Someone says, what if someone said, what if, what if my husband said like this? Is it divorce or not? So the one who answers such questions, he needs to be knowledgeable of the language. He cannot give the verdict for the statement unless he knows the terminologies of the people of the town, including the slang language. Including slang language. So I might have told you before, on more than one occasion, someone would ask me, someone said this in Urdu. And they will give me something in English. So they say this sentence in English here. Someone said this in Urdu. Is it kufur? So I can't answer that. Because I don't know Urdu. So a person might say, Lira, it's translated for you right there. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. Because I don't know how many ways that statement can go in the, the language it was said. Just because you translated it doesn't mean that the way it was translated matches exactly the way it was said in Urdu, for example. How many ways it can go in English doesn't mean same ways it can go in Urdu. Like when I said to a brother in Arabic, I said to him, Put yourself in my shoe. So he was offended. Did I mean to offend him by that? No. Yani, I, thought, I thought the idiom would translate. The, the idiom didn't translate. So he was so upset with me. He felt that I insulted him for telling him to put himself in my shoe. Wallahu alam, Allah knows best.